Adjusterpedia.com. Hey everyone, Brett with Adjusterpedia.com. So I'm going to show you how to create or sketch interior rooms that are a little more complex. Right here, you can see real quick that you have a vaulted ceiling going into a slope ceiling in the front room, then it flattens out the top. And then we're going to go into the dining area of the kitchen. You can see it flat at the top and it goes down a slope and it flattens out back by that back door. And looking in the kitchen, you see that there's just regular box ceiling. It's an eight foot ceiling. Uh, looking at it again once more, um, going back to the front here. I'm going to go ahead and sketch this. Uh, I'll show you my sketch and I'll be right back, guys. Hey, guys, I'm back. So here's my hand drawn sketch. I measured everything out. Uh, you can see the front, front room, the living room on the left hand side. You got your vaulted ceiling. I highlighted all the different ceilings in here. So on the left, you got your vaulted ceiling, and then it goes into your slope ceiling. It flattens out. And as you go into the dining area, it's flat, and it slopes back down, and then it's flat again, and then flat over the kitchen area on the lower right-hand corner. Um, upper left-hand corner, you can see that there's a uh, little uh, coat closet also. So we're going to get going. We're going to sketch. Pause this if you want. Take a picture of it. So you have reference if you want and uh let's roll all right guys i am in sketch we got a blank canvas to start with so what we're going to do is i'm going to create that living room first where that slope ceiling gets intersected with the vault ceiling uh, so i'm going to hit r for room it's your shortcut drop it in here come on work with me stretch this out because this is 21.67 lengthwise and this was roughly 10 feet we're going to change this to a slope and the top of that slope was 13.2 i'm going to call this living room not library, living room. There we go. And remember this arrow here is always pointing up toward the high peak. So let's spin this around. It's better for me visually to do it this way. So you can do it whichever way you want. So now the next thing we need to do is grab another room. So R for room. I'm just going to drop it over here for now. We are going to go in here. Um, I'm going to make this a subgroup of the living room because it is going to be our peaked room. So go in here to ceiling type, drop down, peaked room. Uh, the high or the, the peak was at 12.2. And it looks like we got everything in there we need done, but we're going to rotate it. And I'm going to. Move that wall in so it is 10 feet. I'm going to have to recenter my peak here. You can see it's off now. So let's go back into the room, not the wall. And we're going to go back. Since my room is 10 feet, that peak needs to be right in the middle. You might find a room that's odd where the peak is not right in the middle. So this is how you change it the other way. But we're going to make it so that peak is in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that room over here. And got to get this a little bit closer to where it needs to be 210. So if it's 210 exterior, you add four for the walls. And I know this was 32 here. So uh, we're at 28 actually. So we need to drag it back over just a tad. All right, so that's pretty close. We'll go with that. Uh, let's recenter it here so we can see the whole thing. Next thing I'm going to do is, if I can, grab that wall. We're going to stretch it down to two feet. because That's how far the little bow bay window stuck out here. And I'm going to stretch this back to, I believe it is seven, eight. 710, excuse me, 7 feet 10. 
because that will give us our overall length of this being a 10 foot room going this way. So it was about a 10 by 10. So we got that done. I'm going to go ahead and grab my vortex tool and create the bow bay window here. So what you want to do is go to, so I know that the, the angled wall was 2.6 feet in. So I click where it's going to be. And I pull this down you can see it gives you all kinds of wonky angles. I'll drop it there. So now I got my first angled wall. I'm going to come back over here and do the same thing at 2.6 so they're even. So this really helps being able to use this vortex tool because when you just drag a wall or drag something it it snaps in. Xactimate just makes it snap in at certain angles. This way you can create whatever angle you want. All right. So now we're going to have to use that vortex tool one more time, and I'll show you why. If we go to 3D view, back out here a little bit, and so we got our room going. And But you can see how that ceiling, see how all that blank space is because this is squared off and this is squared off. So we need to create our wall at an angle. So we're going to vortex that thing again. Now there is a trick to this vortex of these rooms or these walls because they come to a point here, but it's not actually going to be a point. It's going to be about four. It should be four inches, not about um, when you're done. So you'll have a little four inch wall here because walls are four inches. So they have to go into each other. So if I put this straight up, you can see my room is five feet on either side. So what I need to do is come over to four foot 10 on the interior, because that will give me two inches on this side. And if I can get this thing to cooperate, there we go. And then what I need to do is use the vortex tool and I am going to go, uh, something's, something's a little, iffy here um this might not work out directly oh there we go it did okay so you can see that the um the peak is right in the center still okay so it's not off centered now the next thing we got to do is highlight wall delete highlight wall delete and highlight your little nubby wall here and delete all right Let's take a look at it in 3D now. You can see, maybe, I'll zoom back in, that the only thing really missing is the wall area. Okay, let me show you an example here that I have done. Uh, let's go into this tab here and recenter. So I have Goldilocks and the Three Bears, basically. Um, so this one, if you look at the peak, it's too short. It doesn't go back 10 feet here, okay? This one here goes back 10 feet, and it's just right. And this one here goes way too long. Now, let me show you what happens in 3D mode when we don't get it correct. So if it's too long, this peak roof goes into the slope roof too far. If you, whoops, let me see if I can... At that so see it goes in too far and so it doesn't create an even four inch wall going through here this one you can see if we zoom in it's just right all right and this porridge is just right and if we go to the one that's too short and we look down on it you can see that there's a gap here and it doesn't go far enough back to meet the sloped roof. The peak doesn't go all the way back. So it's very important to measure how far that peak goes into the sloped room. You have to have the uh, height of the sloped room and the height of the peaked room so it intersects correctly. All right, so we're gonna go back in now and recenter this. All right, next thing I need to do is a closet. So I'm going to use the break tool. And we had a little uh, coat closet here, and this was 2.7. I'm sorry, 3.1. 3.1. 
All right, and then what we have to do is hold the control key down, come back up here, click on this, and I'm gonna pull it out 2.7 here, 2.7, boom. All right, so that's our coat, coat closet. I'm gonna go back in here now. So remember, since I pulled that room from a sloped room, that is gonna be a sloped ceiling in there, but not a sloped ceiling in that closet. It's just a regular flat ceiling. So we need to go back to box, and it's gonna be eight, and we're gonna call this closet. There we go, and that's that's it for that. Uh, let's go ahead and drop a couple doors in here. D for door, and my door is open in the wrong way, so we can just go in here, click right-handed, go to left-handed. Then we're gonna do one more D for door shortcut, and a closet door that was right here. There we go. Let's go W for window. Now my window, the parameters are set weird for this. I'm gonna just drop it over here just for temporary purposes. And we're gonna call this uh, two feet. So I'm gonna highlight it, hit control X and then control V. So we can copy it or actually delete it over there and drop it in and control v again since i have that window already selected control v again drop one in over here control v again i'm going to drop one over here i'm going to redo this one foot because that side light was only a foot wide and drag it over a little bit we're going to go into properties of that and i'm going to change the base height so it was about uh, six inches off the ground and the height of it was about seven feet. And there we go. Let's change this window. This front window is a little bit bigger. Uh, the width was three. You can also click on the number, but I can't get to it because it's centered off the screen. So back out real quick so we can see what we got going i always like to look at it in 3d mode just to take a look at it so yeah my my window's probably a little bit high here i uh, probably only went to the door so it might be only six feet tall there if we started a little high here anyway you sort of get the idea and that roof line goes and flows in just right so all right next thing we're gonna do is this forward a little bit r for room or you can click on room over there we're going to drop a room here and pull it over if i can get it so this is going to be the easiest room to do um, the reason being it's a regular flat roof or flat ceiling excuse me uh, over the kitchen area um, what do we have here uh, I think this is about 11 all right yeah, let's check it out here where's my calculator so we had 21.67 minus 9.6 so actually it's 12 12.07 boom now we're going to grab another room and we're going to drop it right in there all right so this room though is the dining area so dining room and it was actually a sloped room so we got to go to sloped the height of this was 13.2 so it can meet the other um uh, let's see i think that's it now one thing i did forget to do is uh, drop another room in here because we did have a little flat area at the top of this front room so i need to go back into the drawing board here and we're going to highlight this back wall <clears throat> excuse me hit control 
and drag this out and it was one and a half feet, so 1.5. We're gonna have to go in here and we're going to get into the room. No, the room, not the, there we go. And remember when I told you, if you drag a room, it keeps those properties from another, the other room. So it's a slope zone. So we gotta go back to box. And now it automatically reverts back to eight. So it's not correct. It needs to be 13.2 because it is the same height as that sloped ceiling that's coming up. All right. And we're gonna do a subgroup of the living room. And I'm going to get rid of, there's no need for me to have it. Um, I don't want to show the uh, label, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead, obviously, and delete this wall. And now we had another room. So I need to highlight this, hit control, actually not really another room, but another ceiling type in this dining area. And that was also 1.5. And let's see if we can get this all lined up. Wink. There we go. Uh, same thing. I pulled that from a sloped room, so I got to change that back to a boxed ceiling. And since I changed it back, it reverts to 8, but I got to go 13.2 for that ceiling height because it is at the top. Um, and then I'm going to delete this wall. I'm going to take my kitchen and stretch it out there. But I need to stretch it back over here because I know this was only 11.5. And I'm going to bring this in. And I know I had another room that was, and I'm having a little trouble here trying to get to it, so we'll go there. And I'm going to click on that wall, hit control again, and we have that flat room flatten out back here. So I gotta go back into properties here. Um, instead of sloped, again, we're gonna go box, and it's at the bottom, eight feet, and it should be right. I am not gonna show the label here because it's a subgroup of the dining room. So we're gonna have to change it to subgroup of dining room, right? And we're gonna delete that wall. Come in here. How the heck did that get? Hmm. So this should only be 1.5. I don't know how we got that wrong. There we go. And we gotta come in here and make this, I think we already did a subgroup or didn't we? No, we did not. So it's gonna be a subgroup of dining room again. Show a label, nah, we don't need to show the label because it's all one room. Okay, so other thing we gotta do here is delete these walls. But when we do them, there's gonna be a trick to this now. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can see this better. I'm going to highlight this so we can see it now. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about here before I just do it. So when I go in and I look here, right, you can see that this wall here, if I pull away, it's sort of grayish yellowed. This wall has nothing, right? So there's no wall interior wise. We just deleted it. So, I mean, if I was outside looking in, we could look right in and there's no wall here on the interior. So we need to make it so there's a wall. And to do that, because we're joining a box room with a sloped room, um, highlight a little bit so we can see it. And we're gonna tap on this wall here. And then we're gonna go to properties. And I don't think I'm in the right, I'm on the wall surface actually, I need to get into the wall itself. There we go. It's better to do it before you delete the wall because you can find the wall a whole lot easier. So 
Uh, see where it says opening goes to ceiling. That's not true. Uh, opening only goes up eight feet, right? Because that wall has to come down and meet the kitchen area. So I've done that one. Remember, we had another little room here. So let's just take a look real quick. That way I can show you guys. So see, now I've got a little bit of a wall going here on the interior, but there's something missing here still. You can see the colors. So that's a different color. So we still have to bring that wall up too. So if I click on that wall and it says opening goes to the ceiling, no, it does not. And it only goes up eight feet again. Boom. Check it out. Now you can see it. There it is. It's grayed out a little bit. So we've got the wall there. So if we add paint, if we have to do something, it'll take care of it. Uh, last thing to do is just add some doors, windows, uh, delete a missing wall. So let's go to missing wall and we know that there was a about a five foot opening here close enough five that walked through we had uh, let's go control v do i still have that window attached i do uh, control v window control v there's a window over the sink here on this side there's one over here control v um, I'm going to go ahead and make these three three foot windows. Come back. I'm going to hit D for door. Drop a door right in the middle here. And I think we're good. Now these wall or these windows, oops, they went down just to make it correct. Um, these were about. Uh, so the height, base height of those windows were about, uh, let's say six inches off the ground. And they were probably six and a half feet tall. We do the same thing for this window, change the properties of it. What did I say? Six inches off the ground and the height were six and a half, oops. Oops, and where did we go? There we go. Let's try this again. Now, uh, so the window, I did the wrong. Now the width is still two feet. The base height, let's do six inches. And the height, 6.5. Yeah, you have to make sure you get that correct. And let's take a spin real quick our final product so look at the front of the house and I could adjust this window and I'll do it later bring that down to the door height but there's your little bay, bow bay window your peak room goes right into your sloped room perfectly and you have the flat and the flat and then your slope goes back down to a flat and then you have your flat over the kitchen there are your two windows over the sink, and there are your two windows next to the door in the back. That's pretty good. So, I, guys, I hope this really helps you guys. I showed you how to use the Vortex tool, how to blend in a slope ceiling to a vault ceiling, um, change some things, how to use shortcuts as far as hitting control, uh, control Vs and control S, control C uh, to just keep putting windows out uh, you can also just use the www or you know hitting w for uh, a window and d for door and it's a shortcut r for room just remember those things will help you out quite a bit um, when you're sketching a large project so if this is the, if this video helped you guys just please like and subscribe uh, and share our videos uh, hope you guys have a good day thanks